this just in, there is a brand new feature in Adobe Premiere Pro that is just going to save you a ton of time when editing. And with this feature, you're not going to need to do that round tripping in After Effects. Another thing too with this new feature is that your color grading in Premiere Pro just got a little bit better. We'll find out how. So we'll jump into Premiere Pro, make sure that you're in the latest version of Premiere Pro beta. So this tool is called the object masking tool and it is powered by AI to be able to mask automatically inside Premiere Pro and track a mask, like actually track it. Unlike the previous versions of Premiere Pro where tracking was sort of hit and miss and just overall super clunky. Traditionally, if I wanted to create a cutout or for example, mask myself here, I'll have to go right click and send this clip to After Effects and just do rotoscoping directly there in After Effects. So this new feature in Premiere Pro is almost like rotoscoping, but it is not exactly, but it works pretty much the same way or at least somewhat the same way. So right off the bat, you see that there is one new thing here under effect controls, and this is the unassigned mask tab. So let's go into our tools panel right here, and you'll see that now you have an object mask tool, ellipse mask tool, pen mask tool, and a rectangle mask tool. These are more refined and a lot better. We'll try the object mask tool. With the clip selected, we can go over to the footage and it'll identify the object in this clip, which is myself. So we'll go to the beginning of the clip actually, click on myself and Premiere Pro automatically has selected myself and we go here to the effect controls panel. We see that now we have an object mask that has been created. So we'll go and just track it like you would before in Premiere Pro, but now this actually works. This is all in real time, 15, 14 seconds. It's tracking and it's doing a really good job at this. Pretty good. Huh. So it's done tracking it and you can invert this mask that it's created. You can expand it, you can feather it just like you would with any mask. Now, the thing with this is that although it behaves very similar to rotoscoping in Adobe After Effects, it is not exactly the same. It, instead of that, it's just creating a bunch of masks and keyframing each individual mask, each single frame. And this is a lot easier on your computer because Premiere is just creating masks. And to make this workflow a lot smoother, Premiere Pro creates a different folder called Mask, and this is stored separately in a separate folder inside where your original project folder is. So now with this selected, nothing happens yet because the mass, as you remember, is still unassigned. So if we move this to opacity, we can see that we get a cutout of that mask. And this is really cool because it just gonna make this effect a lot easier if you wanna put something in between your background and yourself, for example, text. Let's try that, text. And we will duplicate this clip here, bring it up top, and this bottom clip here will select and delete that mask that has been created. And we can take a look at the clip. You can see that Premiere Pro has done a really good job at tracking myself. But now let's try another clip here that's a little bit busier. We have a tree right here next to me. Let's see how this performs. We'll select that, go to object mask tool, and it has selected me here. I guess the issue would be if you wanted to select something else, say you wanted the tree and not the person, doesn't seem to highlight any of that. So I guess for now, we'll identify a person or the subject as the object. So select that and we'll track it. And we'll do the same thing. Let's delete that mask. And here actually we'll drag this mask to opacity. And now we'll bring in this text again. And, and the, you can see that the edges are not 100% clean in certain parts, but still it does a really good job, especially with this clip. 
Another clip that I have here is hopefully a little bit more challenging for this effect and see if this actually works. So select object. So like this person right here and it only selected the person. I'm going to select the bike here as well. So it adds to it. As you can see, if I click outside of that, it does not recognize anything else as something that I can add. So it does a pretty good job at generally recognizing your subject and we'll track. There is another person that comes into frame here, another uh, BMXer, and it seems like the track and the mass stuck to the first person, which is pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do now is at one point here where this person enters, I'm going to try to track this person too. Let's click on this person, select the bike as well. And yeah, I think we're good to start tracking. Track forward. So let's see now if this works. I'm going to move this to opacity and duplicate this clip and now have this deleted from the bottom clip. Let's bring this text over. I'm just gonna make it black so we can see it better or a different color. Let's add a stroke to it, uh, like a lot bigger. And yeah, I think it did a pretty good job. And as you can see, it's really good. I guess there's some stuff happening here, right in this part. But I mean, for very quick stuff and even simpler clips, this is a really good way of quickly just getting stuff maxed, maxed out. And you can go really creative and play around with different effects with this, which is really fun. So for example, what I can do with this is have this clip right here and then move this over here, shift this up. So it's a good way to transition certain clips like that, like the cutout transition sort of thing. Go from here to here and yeah, pretty neat. And one more thing that you can do with this that it's going to help with your color grading is this. I'm gonna try to bring this over. So now instead of selecting object mask tool, I'm gonna select ellipse tool and create an ellipse here and my clip. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to track my face here because I want my face to be a little bit brighter than everything else and have a little bit more saturation. I have now this ellipse here and I'm just going to track it. And it's going to try to track my face. As you can see, it's doing a pretty good job. At this point, it kind of moves, it shifts a tiny bit. I can stop that track and then shift that ellipse a little bit more here to center around my face a little bit more. Like so. And back backtrack just a couple of frames. And then from here, I can just continue tracking. Okay, that's good enough. Stop that for the purposes of this example. Let's delete that piece. So what I'm going to do now is add a Lumetri color effect. I'll add it to the clip right here. And as soon as I add it, you can see that the unassigned mask shifted to, be, to become a mask of the Lumetri color panel right here under the tab. So I'll go to curves and increase that exposure in my face just a tiny bit. And just a basic correction here and increase that saturation by a tiny bit. And this is the before and after. There's a little bit more exposure in my face. Maybe that's too much. Yeah, just a little bit of a 
a little bit for, of a pop right there, maybe call it the temperature here. So before and after, so let's see the before. But now with that mass enabled, it tracks my face and the focus can be a little bit more targeted to my face because it's now a little bit brighter. So super useful when it comes to color grading. So anyways, <laughs> what do you think of this new feature in Premiere Pro? Do you like it? Do you think you'll be using it? Or do you think you'll still be round tripping into After Effects? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're still around and watching, here are a couple more videos you could watch next. See you there.